My buddy Jude picked up this Arasaka Type 38 rifle a few years back and for a very good price. The first time we went to shoot it, however, there seemed to be a problem. Even at 10 yards, the bullets were keyholing the target and hitting completely sideways, showcasing the worst, yet most consistent, tumbling I'd ever seen. When these rifles were brought to the United States after World War II, the 6.5mm by 50 Arasaka ammunition they were made to shoot was pretty much non-existent, and a fair number of them were reworked to shoot more common domestic cartridges. This was our first assumption, but after we did a little detective work and made a casting of the chamber, it didn't appear to be the case. Our best guess for the cause of its problems is a small dent in the crown of the barrel, but we haven't attempted to remedy that yet, so the true culprit remains unknown. In the meantime, the rifle at least seems safe to shoot. So when Bryce of RentHighSpeed.com and Ballistic High Speed loaned us a Phantom V711 High Speed camera, I couldn't help but wonder what the perplexing perpendicular pirouette of these bullets would look like in extremely slow motion. So with the Type 38 and 6.5x50 ammo in hand, we headed out to the farm to see what we could capture. What we quickly realized though is that a tumbling bullet isn't the easiest thing to aim. <laughs> that bullet was clearly flipping through the air and didn't hit head on, but let's try to get a cleaner shot and actually take out that threatening pineapple. Two, one! I missed. It nicked the left center. What initially looked like a miss was actually a graze, and this time we can really see the projectile flailing as it flies downrange. The pineapple once again escaped with minimal injuries, and we'll have to line up another shot to try for a better impact. Another try and another graze, although this one hit much harder. From the Phantom camera's 40,000 frame per second point of view, the bullet approaches at an angle and leaves spinning at a much, much faster rate after contacting the outer skin of the fruit. In fact, it's rotating at 69,000 revolutions per minute. Nice. Also, if you squint, you can see an opportunistic fly really regretting his decisions. If you asked him, I think he'd say that was a pretty solid hit, but I still think we can do better. I want to see the damage caused by one of those tumblers hitting center mass. Hey, no. Well, safe to call the pineapple successfully dispatched after that one. The bullet didn't hit right in the center, but it was close enough and sideways enough that it still imparted a lot of energy. Interestingly, this one appeared to go through without much change to its angle, going into and coming out of the target largely facing backwards. With the insides of the pineapple no longer contained and only its outer skin remaining intact, we'd better find something else to pick on. Like, say, this can of orange soda that was coming right for us. After that brutal hit, there were only scraps of aluminum left to pick up. Bullets are, of course, designed to hit head-on, and the rotation imparted on them by the rifling in the barrel adds a lot of stability to aid in this. Certainly, these tumbling bullets are not stable or accurate, but a side effect of hitting sideways is a huge increase in surface area contacting the target, which translates into a tremendous amount of energy transfer. Which means that soda never stood a chance. Just for good measure though, to make sure that wasn't a fluke, we'd better take aim at another. Science is repeatable, after all. Boy, you sure got it. Yep, that seems about right. We've successfully concluded that projectiles flung at high speed by rapidly expanding gases are pretty good at disintegrating pineapples and soda cans. 
but we've got this expensive high-speed camera here, so let's see what it can do. Turning it up to 150,000 frames per second, can we capture that whirling hunk of lead flying past in midair? Oh, uh, well, yes, and it does look very unnatural traveling perpendicular, but the spin isn't really perceivable. The splash of orange soda, however, is. Let's focus in on the bullet leaving the barrel and see if we can spot anything unusual there. The cloud of combustion gases in front of, around, and bursting out behind the bullet is beautiful, without a doubt, and the disorder doesn't show itself until farther downrange, so there doesn't seem to be anything problematic to see here. I'm no expert, maybe the gases sneaking past in front of the bullet are a little excessive, but it's also a well-used 80-plus year old rifle, so maybe it's to be expected. We started off with a war relic and a mystery, and unfortunately it is still waiting to be solved, but thanks to whatever the problem is, we were able to take a really unique look at extreme projectile destabilization, which is definitely a bright side. Thank you to everyone who helped with filming. I gave it a haircut. <laughs> to Jude for the use of the rifle. Oh, ah, Jesus, my baby. And to Bryce for the time with the camera that provided us such an impressive view of the action. I only wish we had more to show. Oh well, maybe next time.